It is time to check in with the mayor of St. Catharines, Walter Zenzik. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you as well, Bob. Yeah, oh, we have to start with an unfortunate story we reported this morning. The uh, Pride Crosswalk downtown was uh, damaged. I know you were there for the unveiling for it and obviously uh, disappointed. I wanted to get your comments. Yeah, it's disheartening, Bob, when you, when you see this kind of uh, vandalism taking place on something that our community is very proud of. And it's, it's something that we don't tolerate. So the Niagara Regional Police are involved and they're looking at the, the footage of, of the area and we're confident that we'll find the individual. Uh, there is a cost to the city of St. Catharines. We are going to repair this quickly in terms of the Pride Crosswalk. And I just want to say it's, it's not reflective of our community, uh, Bob. Our community is a very inclusive community. Uh, we're diverse. We celebrate our, our differences. And this Pride cross, Crosswalk was something that our entire community was proud of. So, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate incident, but it's not a reflection of who we are. Right, and not isolated to St. Catharines, because unfortunately we've had reports similar stories in uh, Halton and uh, Branton elsewhere, be it uh, pride flag stolen or whatever. But I mean, there's these unfortunate isolated incidents. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's Pride Month as well, and and we want to yeah. reassure our LGBTQ2 plus community uh, that we're behind them, that we're there uh, hand in hand, we're we're working together as a community, and and you know we, we've we're not. We're not blind to the fact that there this form of bigotry and, and racism exists in our community and we just we're gonna we're gonna stay focused on making sure that we're bringing everybody together in a positive way and you know we're hoping that those who who think about these kind of, of actions will look deep inside themselves as well and and look for look for the positive side of, of who we are and these are learning opportunities for us and uh, we're going to continue to move forward and, and be in, in very much support of our LGBTQ2 plus community. Okay, I wanted to pick up on something we talked about last week. And you were disappointed in uh, the decision to invoke uh, Section 22 with the uh, Step 1. Uh, and the uh, region's medical officer of health insisted on family members at a patio. And there seems to be a disconnect with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, uh, regional officer of health in the city and the province as well. Is there any movement there? Well, it's just more about an understanding, right? And it, it's an understanding, Bob, of trying to get to a place where we've got to be able to communicate to the people who are going out to the patios and also to the restaurant owners of why a Section 22 needs to be put in place. So it's it's our job as an elected official to be able to question the the activities or actions of our chief medical officer here in, in Niagara. And, that's a very respectful dialogue, and, and I'm sure Dr. Hurd, you would say the same thing, is that he has the absolute authority to bring in these kind of regulations, but it's really important as well to be able to have questions being asked by us as elected officials as to why it's important. And sometimes we're not going to agree on the process or the reasoning behind it, but what we need to be assured of is that whatever's being action is being taken, Bob, is for the best interest of the entire community. And, and we do know that the Delta variant does transmit much quicker and so what we're seeing in other jurisdictions is that you need to have that second dose and here in Niagara we're, we're just over 65 percent first dose we're over 10 percent second dose to really get to that place of of comfort for at, from the medical profession uh, perspective you need to get that second dose into the 40 50 percent range and, and that's going to be difficult to do in the short term so what we need to do as a community is be mindful of the virus is not out of our community that we've got to continue to do our role, play our role in keeping your distance and doing the, the doing the, the things we've been asked to do for 18 months. But at the same time, we've got to we've got to be able to ask people like Dr. Herji, why are you bringing these in? Tell us the information so that we can also communicate that to the broader community. So I think it's that constant dialogue that's going to be important as we get to the last stages of of where we are with COVID-19. Okay, uh, speaking of patio, so you've waived fees for next year. What was behind yeah. that decision? Well, we recognize that, you know, two years of impact on restaurants, and that's revenue that's never going to come back, Bob. So all those profits are lost and two years of struggles. And so what we felt as a council is let's give the businesses in those areas that have been impacted the ability to look towards 2022 and recognize that at least the city is doing what, what it can to reduce whatever financial burdens that are in place, things like businesses licensing and patio fees, so that they can plan for 2022 as well. It's still a, it's going to be a difficult year for a lot of those businesses. And moving into 2022, I believe it's still going to be a bit of a challenge. 
So we've got to do our part to try and help those who have been most impacted. Okay. Hey, I wish we had more time, but uh, we'll uh, <laughs> talk again next week. Stay I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to my lemonade uh, with jalapeno in it. <laughs> <laughs> wish we could join you. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Zanzik. Take care. Take care. <laughs>